Ever wondered how your phone can recognize faces, how Spotify suggests new music, or how Google can predict what you're about to search for? How a computer can recognize a cat in a picture, or how it can predict the weather with astonishing accuracy? That's all machine learning at work. But what exactly is machine learning, and how does it work? Well, today we're breaking it down in simple terms so that by the end of this video, you'll understand not only what machine learning is, but also how computers learn on their own and get smarter over time. We will also explain how machine learning differs from artificial intelligence AI. What is the future of artificial intelligence? Can machines surpass human intelligence? Welcome to Club Academia, where curiosity meets knowledge. If you're passionate about science, technology, and the wonders of our world, you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into one of the coolest topics in the world of artificial intelligence, machine learning. We will explore and explain how does a machine learn? How can it make decisions, solve problems, and even understand human language? We will exploring machine learning's core concepts, its diverse applications, and its potential to reshape our world. We will explain how self-driving cars, medical diagnosis tools, and personalized recommendations on Netflix use machine learning to become better. By the end of this video, you'll be more knowledgeable and definitely a little wiser than when we got started. At its core, machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence, AI. AI is the broader field of creating machines that can simulate human-like intelligence. While machine learning is the process by which computers learn from data and improve their performance without being explicitly programmed. Think of it like this. Imagine you're teaching a child to recognize animals. You show them pictures of cats and dogs, tell them what each one is, and over time, they start to understand the differences. Eventually, they can look at a new picture and tell you if it's a cat or a dog. This is what machine learning does. Computers are trained on data and they learn patterns to make predictions or decisions. Now that we know what machine learning is, let's take it a step further and break it down into the three main types of machine learning. Supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. Let's take a deeper look into each of these three types. First up, supervised learning. Think of this as a teacher-student relationship. You have a labeled data set, which means that the data comes with the correct answers. You teach the machine by feeding it this data, and it learns to make predictions based on these examples. Imagine you want to teach your computer to recognize pictures of cats and dogs. You give the machine hundreds, maybe thousands of pictures that are already labeled as cat or dog. The machine looks at these examples, learns the features that make a cat a cat and a dog a dog, like the shape of the ears, the tail, the nose. And then, when you show it a new picture, it can correctly predict whether it's a cat or a dog. It's like grading homework. Supervised learning is great for tasks like image recognition, email spam filtering, and even predicting stock prices. But there's a twist. Supervised learning needs a lot of labeled data to train the model. The more data, the better the learning. With unsupervised learning, there are no labels. The machine doesn't get told what's right or wrong. Instead, it's left to find patterns and relationships in the data on its own. Think of it like giving a student a pile of pictures of animals but not telling them what's a cat, dog, or elephant. With unsupervised learning, the machine will start grouping similar pictures together based on features, like all the four-legged animals, or all animals with pointy ears. This is called clustering. One example of unsupervised learning is when Spotify recommends new songs based on your listening habits. It doesn't need to know what songs you already like. It just identifies patterns in your preferences. Unsupervised learning is perfect for things like customer segmentation, anomaly detection, and even in recommendation systems. Reinforcement learning is a little like teaching a dog new tricks. You don't tell the dog exactly what to do, but you reward it when it does something right. In reinforcement learning, the machine learns by interacting with its environment, trying different actions, and receiving rewards or penalties based on the outcome. Over time, it gets better at taking actions that maximize its reward. Imagine you're teaching a computer to play a game, like chess. It starts out making random moves, but each time it wins a game, it gets a reward. With each game, it learns which moves increase its chances of winning, and over time, it becomes better and better, often surpassing human players. This is how reinforcement learning is used in game AI, robotics, and even in training self-driving cars. These three types, supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning, are just the basics. 
But as you can see, the way machines learn is influenced by how we feed them data and the environment they interact with. Now, let's talk about how machine learning algorithms improve over time. The beauty of machine learning is that the more data the algorithm has, the better it becomes. Let's say you're training a model to predict the weather. Initially, it might not be very accurate, but as it gets more data about past weather patterns, it refines its predictions and gets smarter. Basically, the algorithm is constantly adjusting itself. It uses something called training, which is the process of running the model through data multiple times, tweaking it a little bit each time to minimize errors. Over time, the model becomes more accurate, and it can make predictions that are incredibly close to what happens in real life. Let's discuss the training process. Training process is how model learns from data. Model training is the process of teaching a model how to make predictions based on the data you give it. To do this, we first need to feed it a data set, and the model learns patterns from that data to predict future outcomes. This is the most important step in machine learning, how the model gets smarter. Imagine you're training a model to predict house prices based on features like size, location, and the number of bedrooms. You have a training set. This is the data that comes with the correct answers, like actual house prices. The model will look at this data, compare it with the actual prices, and learn how these features relate to the price. Now, the model doesn't know how to make predictions at first. It starts by making random guesses. And then, over time, it adjusts itself based on the difference between its predictions and the actual values. This process is called training the model. As the model learns, it minimizes the difference between its predictions and the real outcomes. This is done using a mathematical concept called a loss function. The loss function measures how far off the model's predictions are, and the goal is to reduce this loss to make the model more accurate. Okay, so now the model is trained, but how do we know if it's any good? Well, that brings us to model evaluation. Once the model is trained, we need to assess how well it's performing. This is where model evaluation comes in. We don't want to evaluate the model using the same data it was trained on, because that would be like testing a student on the homework they've already seen. So, we use a separate data set called the validation set. Think of the validation set as a quiz for the model. This data is different from the training data, and it helps us see how well the model generalizes, meaning how well it performs on new unseen data. We feed this data into the model, and it makes predictions. Then we compare the predictions to the actual values and calculate its accuracy. Evaluation metrics, like accuracy, precision, and recall, help us assess how well the model is doing. These metrics depend on the type of problem you're solving. For example, if you're working on a classification problem, like classifying emails as spam or not, accuracy might be a key metric. For regression problems like predicting house prices, you might use metrics like mean squared error MSE to measure the difference between predicted and actual values. Now that we know how to evaluate the model, how do we make it even better? This brings us to model optimization. Model optimization is all about improving the model's performance. There are two main techniques we use to make a model more accurate, hyperparameter tuning and regularization. First, let's talk about hyperparameter tuning. Hyperparameters are settings that we, as developers, set before training the model. These include things like the learning rate, the number of layers in a neural network, or the maximum depth of a decision tree. These parameters control how the model learns and can significantly affect its performance. To optimize the model, we try different combinations of hyperparameters and see which one gives the best performance. This process is called hyperparameter tuning. For example, if you set the learning rate too high, the model might overshoot the optimal solution. If it's too low, the model may take too long to learn. Hyperparameter tuning can be done manually. Or you can use techniques like grid search or random search to automate the process. These methods test different combinations of hyperparameters and help find the best one for your model. Next up is regularization. Sometimes, a model can get so good at fitting the training data that it actually starts to memorize it, rather than learning the patterns. This is known as overfitting. Overfitting is like a student memorizing answers to a test but failing to understand the concepts, so they do poorly on new problems. Regularization helps prevent overfitting by adding a penalty to the model for being too complex. It forces the model to be simpler, so it doesn't overfit the training data. Two common regularization techniques are L1 regularization lasso and L2 regularization ridge. 
L1 regularization can zero out some features entirely, forcing the model to focus on the most important ones. L2 regularization, on the other hand, penalizes large weights in the model, encouraging it to make more balanced predictions. Both of these techniques help improve the model's ability to generalize to new data. So, to summarize, here's what we covered today. First, model training is when the model learns from the data to make predictions. Then, we evaluate the model using a separate validation set to check how well it generalizes to new data. And finally, we optimize the model through hyperparameter tuning to improve performance and regularization to prevent overfitting. Now, you might be wondering, how does this differ from AI? Good question. As I mentioned earlier, AI is the broad field focused on making machines simulate human intelligence, while machine learning is a way to achieve AI. In other words, machine learning is the tool or technique used within the AI toolbox. It's like having a car and the engine. AI is the car, and machine learning is the engine that makes it go. Check out our video on what is AI, what is generative AI, what is ChatGPT, what is Turing test. It's a great starting point to understand the basics. So while all machine learning is AI, not all AI is machine learning. AI includes rule-based systems and expert systems, which don't necessarily learn from data. But machine learning is all about learning patterns and improving performance. So to recap, Machine learning is how computers can learn and improve from data without needing step-by-step -step instructions. Whether it's supervised learning, where the machine learns from labeled data, unsupervised learning, where it finds patterns on its own, or reinforcement learning, where it learns from rewards. Machine learning is a powerful tool transforming industries across the world. And the more data it gets, the smarter it gets. Machine learning is having an incredible impact across various industries. One. Healthcare. In healthcare, machine learning is revolutionizing diagnosis and treatment. For example, medical image analysis uses machine learning to detect diseases like cancer from x-rays, CT scans, and MRIs with incredible accuracy, sometimes even better than human doctors. Machine learning is also speeding up drug discovery, helping researchers find new treatments faster by analyzing massive datasets of compounds and their effects on diseases. And personalized medicine is using machine learning to tailor treatments to individuals based on their genetics and health data. Two, finance. Next in finance, machine learning is helping us stay safe and make smarter investments. Fraud detection uses machine learning to identify suspicious transactions, flagging potential fraud in real time. Algorithmic trading is using automated systems that analyze market trends to make split-second investment decisions. And machine learning models are helping financial institutions with risk assessment, evaluating potential risks and predicting market shifts. 3. Autonomous vehicles. Machine learning is also driving the future of transportation. Literally. Self-driving cars use machine learning to interpret the world around them using sensors and cameras. This is known as perception. The car then makes real-time decisions, from stopping at traffic lights to navigating around obstacles, which is called decision-making. Finally, the car executes those decisions through control systems that ensure safe driving maneuvers. The global machine learning market is expected to grow from $21.2 billion in 2022 to over $100 billion by 2030. Companies like Tesla, Google, and Amazon are using machine learning to innovate in their industries, with Tesla's self-driving tech and Amazon's recommendation engine being prime examples. Machine learning thrives when there's a large amount of data. The more data it has, the better it gets at recognizing patterns and making predictions. It also works best when there's a clear problem definition, like predicting customer demand or diagnosing diseases. And speaking of evolution, there are exciting trends on the horizon, like reinforcement learning, which is teaching machines to learn from trial and error, generative AI, which can create original content, and explainable AI, which makes machine learning models more transparent and understandable. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more insights into AI and machine learning. Drop your thoughts or questions in the comments below, and let's keep the conversation going. Stay curious and keep questioning. Until next time, let's continue exploring the wonders of science and technology together at Club Academia.